Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Phoenix Wright here on Donnerom. It's day three, and we're going into the trial um, on episode five here on Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Yeah, it's a little longer episodes now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, they're giving you a lot of in game well, content well, here. Yeah. What is. Oh, never mind. So, what do you think, Mr. Wright? I think the prosecution is as confused as we are. After all. The victim was murdered in two different places at the same time. Oh, yeah, time. Lana. Lana Sky, the defendant. Oh, no. There you a, are. <laughs> that's her. Who was Lana? And a different suspect was arrested at each of the crime scenes. It might have been me. I Lana. don't know. Go for it, Don. Good morning, Mr. Wright. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize for yesterday. I was indisposed. I hope they didn't hold you too long for questioning. Nothing can hold me. <laughs> We just finished, actually. I'm used to all-nighters. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so how'd it go? Poorly for the opponent. It's as Mr. Wright suspects the police are clueless. I figured as much, so I struck a plea bargain. A plea bargain? What do you mean by that? They pleaded to me. <laughs> we agreed. If, if I told them the truth behind this simultaneous murder. They wouldn't seek capital punishment. That's what I mean, Emma. But Lana, don't tell me you... Ellipsis. <laughs> much to my regret, I'm as much in the dark about this as they are. Miss Sky. Mm. We found traces of evidence of a certain person in the police, ev police department's evidence room. They belong to Officer Jake Marshall. Oh, yeah. What kind of trace evidence? Bloodstained fingerprints, to be exact. Oh, that's... Hmm. <laughs> that's the trump card I have up my sleeve today. You do understand what this means, don't you? In order to defend my sister, you're going to accuse Mr. Marshall? We have to play the cards we're dealt. Isn't that right, Miss Guy? Do what you have to do, Mr. Wright. Yeah, it's been a while for us, so yeah. There's been a uh, court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is. Hmm. I know that finger wag. I'm afraid you'll have to clarify, though. It takes 30 minutes by car to reach the police department from the prosecutor's office. Yet the victim, Bruce Goodman, was slain at both places at the same time. Well, that's not physically possible, is it? What's more, I hear the victim from the evidence room just disappeared. Yes, and the body eventually reappeared in the trunk of Miss Tredgeworth's car. Wow, this is one of those messed up trials. One of my duties as prosecutor is to present impartial evidence. Today I will present evidence relating to the murder at the police department. In so doing, I believe the way in which we should proceed will reveal itself. And now that's what sets Mr. Edgeworth apart. He sounds on top of things. Even though he doesn't know what's going on himself. And that's supposed to be an admirable trait? Very well. Let the trial resume. On the day of the crime, what exactly transpired at the police department? <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, you may call your first witness of the day. For its first witness, the prosecution calls the suspect of the murder that occurred at the police department. The suspect? You mean the murderer, so-called? <laughs> oh, boy. Things are getting wild from the get-go. They're about to get wilder. Oh, never mind. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah, this, that guy's me, too. I forgot about, the, <coughs> forgot about him. Will the witness please state his name and occupation? Yes, sir. I'm Officer Mike Meekin, sir. <laughs> My occupation is... Uh, that would be murderer, <laughs> sir. <laughs> uh, huh. So you're telling us you're the a professional killer. 
Sir, it was me, sir. I, I'm the one who did it. I'll never kill anyone again, sir. You got to believe me. Uh, actually, I would like to... Sir! You would call me part of the younger generation, sir. A, a, per, a person whose actions adults can't possibly comprehend. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, <laughs> help. <laughs> Officer Meekins. Yeah, yeah, sir. Give us your report of the crime. Consider that in order. Y yes, sir, as you wish. After all, I am part of a generation that must be told what to do, sir. <laughs> you can't fault him for a lack of enthusiasm. Although it's not my normal duty, I was assigned to guard the evidence room for that day. I spotted a suspicious man on the security screen and I rushed into the room. See? Here I am. I was only doing what I was trained to do, sir. I was suddenly attacked. I fought for my life and I, I did it. After that, I passed out uh, until another officer smacked me awake. Hmm. So the victim, Detective Goodman, attacked you. Do unto others before they do unto you. That's the Meekins family motto, sir. Oh, I see. Then you fainted, and a colleague helped you regain consciousness through smacking. Yes, sir. He uh, knocked me upside the head, sir. Hmm. Very well. Defense may begin cross-examination. What I need here is more info to work Does with. Does Meekins have a defense attorney? Because <laughs> we're defending Sky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's... He's just... Yeah. No, no, he's he's uh, testifying in Lana Sky's case, so this has nothing to do with his... Okay, so he has a different trial yeah. for the same victim. <laughs> Mr. Meekins, you work in the General Affairs Department, do you not? Yes, sir. I'm in charge of hiring new recruits. Yikes. Now there's a scary thought. An army of meekins. Evidence transferal was taking place on the day of the crime. Which meant many officers were given special tasks not ordinarily performed. I was in charge of guarding the Blue Badger, sir. The Blue Badger. Yes, sir, the lovely police mascot created by the Chief of Detectives, sir. Damn, where's its handprint? I can't see it. It's not there. I was to ensure it wasn't broken during the transferal process. Something's covered up above the left eye. That's always been like that. He had, uh, it's also got uh, bandages. Uh, I, was, yeah. I was to ensure, okay, uh, that was my sole mission for the day. Good delegation. I don't goddamn believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a very important mission. After the award ceremony finished that day, there were a lot of people running around, and uh, I relocated the blue badger to the evidence room. Hmm. So that's why you went to the evidence room. And tell us, what did you see when you got there? <laughs> 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 the face well... He looks like he has to pee. Right. <laughs> In order to enter the evidence room, you need an ID card. Am I correct? Precisely, sir. I have one right here around my neck. So then your ID number should be listed on here, right? Ah, uh, yeah, we have that little list. We, would, we deduced things. There it is. I found it. That's the one right there. It did it. <laughs> <laughs> it it's that number. That's my number. <laughs> I see, ellipsis, huh? But the number 49898596 is <gasps> shown being used twice. My God. Please explain, witness. There's no real mystery, sir. First time was when I relocated the blue badger. Oh, that's right. It was in there. And the second time is when I went to go get him after everything settled down. Hmm. 
So it was during the second time when... Yes, sir, that's when I spotted the man on the security screen and killed him. <laughs> I was only doing what I was trained to do. <laughs> <laughs> so you were attacked. Can you please tell us exactly what happened that, uh, to you? It was a knife! A knife! Detective Goodman pulled a knife on you. What happened then? Well, with me charging in on him like that, he looked as surprised as I was. You aren't exactly the kind of person someone would want to run into. I'm a fierce man when I react, and I reacted. <laughs> I swung my arms like an octopus, struggling to detain him. That's how I got this gash on my hand. Maybe if you just kept your cool, your hand wouldn't be... When I, when I saw the blood trickling down my arm, I, I panicked. I grabbed the man by his collar. Fought for his life, he did. What exactly do you mean when you say you uh, did it? I know I don't look like the type, but I'm really into kung fu films, sir. The man let his guard down for just an instant, so I snatched his knife from him. You took his knife? I sp- Put him around and performed a disarming maneuver. I made sure to close my eyes like a man. I <laughs> uh, see. He must have been desperate. The next thing I knew, his white coat was drenched in a sea of blood, and the next thing I knew... Yes? He punched me right in my face. Okay, so he got punched. About what time did you regain consciousness? No offense, sir, but how am I supposed to know that? I was unconscious. Oh, uh, right. Because I'm asking when you weren't unconscious. Yeah. According to the report from the officer that woke up the witness, it was about 5.30. He hit me right in the head. Again. (laughs) I woke up crying tears of manly pain. That's nice. It's nice that you recovered, that is. But when I came around, I made sure to finish my mission. <gasps> Your mission? The Blue Badger, of course. I returned to him to the entrance before things got out of hand. Oh, maybe it's his hand, right? Yeah. Well, we can all rest easy now. I know I am. Uh, I believe we have uh, a fairly accurate picture of what what happened. I, I, <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Only one thing remains unclear. Uh, one? <laughs> Was the man this officer murdered really the victim? He's got a point. Uh, yes, Officer Breakins. With regard to that, sir, I, uh, take a look at that. It was sent to my jail cell. What? Chief Gant delivered it to me just this morning. The chief? Delivered it? What is that? A videotape. I'm a millennial. I know what that is. (laughs) That's absolutely right, sir. I'm a videotape, sir. It contains footage from the security camera in the evidence room, but I don't have a VHS player, so I couldn't play it. What? But I specifically asked if there was such a tape. <gasps> the police are doing the prosecution and dirty. was told it had been mistakenly erased. Oh. Oh. That's quite a mistake. I just do what I'm told, sir. I, it's really the only thing I'm good at. Looks like communication with the police department is as good as ever. Well, we can't all be gumshoe. Well, then, let's uh, have a look. Show us the video of you murdering the victim. Defendant, in another case. Oh, please stop using the word murder. It scares me. A video of a real murder. <laughs> just what we were getting ourselves... Just what are we getting ourselves into? Uh, Your Honor, snuff films are illegal. Oh. <laughs> <gasps> Ah, 
Okay, he does have the handprint right there. You can see it now. Oh, yeah. Oh, please tell me the blue badger kills him by stabbing him with his... The blue badger's the one who punched him in the face, maybe. Ah, maybe. Okay, that is the uh, evidence locker. It is the guy who got killed, it looks like. At least he's wearing (laughs) the same coat. Yeah. Oh, there's Meekins moving in for the kill. There's that fishing pole. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh. Okay, he oh. put his hands up. Okay. There's no one else. <laughs> this is at 515. I'm looking at the numbers to see if they jump, like, you know, King of Kong. <laughs> like if there's missing footage somewhere. Yeah. So, because it panned, that just makes it yeah, he just terrible footage. The, the Wait, did he, like, intentionally sneak under the camera giggling the whole time? <laughs> yeah, we're not seeing the victim. Uh. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I agree with Edgeworth. <laughs> and Meekins. Well, I think we're all thinking the same thing. <laughs> Arby's. <laughs> How can we deal with these unsettling feelings stirred within us? <laughs> what the hell was that wriggling piece of plywood? <laughs> there, that's the pride and joy of the entire criminal affairs department. It's the blue badger. The thin blue badger line. Why am I not surprised this isn't going smoothly? <laughs> Blue Badgers matter. (laughs) Uh, Well, anyway, um, this tape seems to prove that the witness did indeed encounter someone in the evidence room and sort of activity took place. Your Honor, instead of relying on clearly incomplete footage, the witness's testimony will suffice. Is that all right with you, Officer Meekins? Uh, sure, whatever. <laughs> Mystery, Mystery man. man. God gave me a gift. His face can't be clearly seen in the video. But there's no question that the other person was Detective Goodman, sir. Oh, I press him on that, I guess. I mean, he opened the locker, which required Detective Goodman's fingerprint to do. The locker he opened is unquestionably to take good with, sir. <laughs> so it must be him. No one else could have unlocked it. What's this about fingerprints? Each detective has been equipped with a locker. He has been given a locker equipped with a fingerprint activated lock. These locks ensure that each locker can only be opened by the detective it belongs to. Intriguing. That would mean the victim at the crime scene would have to have been Detective Goodman. Very well. The defense may cross-examine. I don't know where this cross-examination will lead. Uh, But everything begins with contradictions. Thank you, Gabe. That's where I have to start. Nothing like a little tutorial in the last part of the game. Yeah. Yes. Okay, his face can't be... Uh, yeah, I can hold it. I could clearly see it. Were you able to get a good look at him? At the face of the man who attacked you with a knife? Uh, sir, if you must label people as having seen or not seen, um, I believe it would be classified as uh, the latter. The la- but you were standing right in front of him, were you not? More to the point, you are the person who fought him, aren't, aren't you? Oh, yeah, it was, it was really cool, but I didn't get a good look at his face. I'm not the kind of guy who looks directly at people when talking or fighting with them. Yeah, that's a good trait for a police officer. Still, I'm sure it was him. He, I bet my badge on it. Okay, other person was Detective Goodman, or was he? But you don't know that for sure, do you? You never actually saw Detective Goodman's face. 
Well, I suppose you might say that. That is, if you must label... Oh, God. Oh, come on. You're using this line again? Since his face can't be identified, only you can verify it. Why is everyone looking at me? I, I had to label your stairs as disturbing. Meekins. Beep. Having been shown a questionable video at best, we are not in the best of moods. Now please be more certain when you testify. Yes, sir. You claim the man who brandished a knife on you was Bruce Goodman. Tell us why you were positive it was him. Uh, he opened the lock. Yeah, he opened that locker, and so he at least had a hand. About these lockers, is there no other way to open them? Nope. I myself have tried all kinds of methods in the past. What? <laughs> I was trying to break into lockers. <laughs> they only respond to fingerprints. Registered fingerprints. I wonder what kind of methods he's tried. Well, if the man opened a locker, um, um, that only responds to fingerprints, I guess it must be the guy. Hmm. Exactly my point, sir. And this, too. Okay. How do you know that information? Yeah, there were a lot of people who didn't. I heard rumors from people in the know, sir. People in the know? The workers in the department cafeteria, they keep me informed. They listen to my romantic troubles, sir. For the record, the open locker did indeed belong to Detective Goodman. I verified this information through a more reliable source. Hmm. So the victim opened the locker with his own fingerprint. Yeah... I guess. However, the most important detail is not shown in this video. The man's face. Sir, if I may say something, sir. Please do. After all, you are the one being <laughs> examined. I don't understand why the man's face is so dang important. I mean, it was his hand. You know, open the fingerprint lock. Come on. And it was his hand that tried to thrust his knife into my body. My unsettled state can testify to this. You have a point. Uh, footage don't lie. That is, unless the defense can find a problem with it. Mr. Wright, let's check the court record again. Is there... That was an obvious problem. <laughs> Regarding the video contained on this tape... There's one thing in particular that seems rather strange. Strange. This contradiction leads to the possibility that the man may not have been Detective Goodman. <gasps> what? This video contains such a contradiction? Interesting. Your Honor, I have a, a proposal. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth. I propose we have the defense point out to us this alleged contradiction <laughs> in the video. This, that's kind of how this was going, Edgeworth. He would want me to point it out. I don't know how else you would tell them what exactly, it is. Exactly. Like, what was... That's weird. <laughs> Your Honor, I have something to say. I have an objection. I want him to say what he's going to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, let's go. I will now play the secret security tape. Show us the contra. Oh, we have to do it in real time. I have oh. to point out a problem in the video. New gameplay mechanic. Okay. This Whatever. is the first time I've ever had to do that. It is. I'll have to press A to pause. <laughs> you can do it, Mr. Wright. Press A to pause. It's set up so you can fast forward, rewind, or pause the video. Okay, we can rewind. Just take a good look and be sure to point out the right thing. Okay, we got to find... Please don't play it too many times. I can't stand it. How did this guy ever become a police officer? Now then, Mr. Wright, please enlighten us. Where is the contradiction that indicates the man? Hey. I think I got an idea. Do, 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 do. 
Do, do, do. Oh, okay. Oh, I do like the cell shading on this guy. <gasps> the glove. Which we did see. Can't remember where we saw it. <clears throat> Dang it, now I'm racking my brain trying to think. What are you thinking, Adam? Is it... Because the glove is something that we point to, at least. Oh, the lights. Forgot about those. The thing that's strange about this video would have to be uh, this. Uh... I need to use my eye drops. I don't get it. Would you mind if I borrowed your eye medicine? Uh, maybe it wasn't. Don't that. look at me with bleary eyes. Before your eyes get too teary, perhaps you should look through it again. Now what do I do? Um, play the video again. <coughs> Just remember one thing, Mr. Wright. Every time you point your finger, someone gets hurt. Okay. Okay. Says the one pointing his finger at us. I will. Uh, okay. We gotta right. find. What is the instruction? Yeah, 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 yeah. We gotta find the. We gotta find the ghost girl behind behind this. Wait, paint cans. The light on the locker. That's. I messed up. Oh, I meant oh. to hit that. The lights on. Okay. Yeah. Why is that light on? Because it's opened. It was already opened. Ah. Yeah. All right, so. Um, how do I rebound? Why? Yeah. Oh, so the lights behind it are just the uh, so lights. Oh, for the let's room. get them right okay. before he opens it. I think you want it before he's there. Oh, it's, that's true. Because when it's it open, it should be At the be very on. beginning, yeah. So I think you want to rewind it where he's to the left. Of like the, right, right there. That catches him in the act. But I think he wanted before yeah, he I gets want the, there. So at it's the very beginning, he didn't be, open we, it. we should see it before he even gets there. So like right back to the beginning. Yeah. Like, like wait for it to pan back while he's not even there. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah, that there. light's already on. Yeah, we got the two hands down. The thing that's strange about this video has got to be this. Officer Minkins. I am strange, sir. <laughs> <laughs> As I understand it, the locker apparatus works like this. I, 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 pal. <laughs> when you grab the handle, a sensor reads your fingerprint. If it's a match... The light turns on and the locker is released. Mm. According to my very limited experience, that's the way I understand it. If so, then something is seriously wrong with this picture. The blue banner. Um... We can go through the whole thing again without being able. I guess so. Okay. Yep. All right. So, did he was he wearing that glove or did it just fall out? It looked like it just fell out of the uh, locker. Yeah. When the I victim reaches for the handle to open the locker, let's rewind a little to earlier. We we let's just watch this. We got uh, we uh, we have to show Edgeworth so he won't reject. There. Here. Yeah. Notice the light. <gasps> it's already lit. <laughs> Precisely my point, Your Honor. The locker was already open before the victim grabbed the handle. <gasps> yeah! oh. Order. Order. What's the meaning of this? It's very simple, Your Honor. The locker wasn't locked on the day of the crime. But the locker locks are controlled by an electronic system. When a door is shut, a sensor is triggered, and the locker is automatically locked. Oh, I know, it must have broken. <laughs> of course, I'm not an expert in this. That's not likely, Your Honor. The sensor would detect and report any malfunction. 
Well, just goes to show novices should keep their mouths shut. So, Mr. Wright, do you have an explanation? Me, Your Honor? Hmm. Why wasn't the locker locked? M me, Your Honor? Well, we do have that log seven 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 seven. Yes. Well, he you came see, in this isn't exactly my else. field. What do you think, Ms. Scientific Investigator? I'm going to delegate to this uh, high school chick. Oh, um, maybe something like jam the system sensor. Something jammed like the sensor. Like gum from gum shoe. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I thought so, too. There's got to be another clue somewhere God in this footage. dang it. Wait, the, 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 the glove. Print. The glove. It was a glove, too, yeah. It was, it was outside. It, was, it fell out because it was inside the door. Yeah, that's, 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 yes. Yeah, the glove. That makes perfect sense. That's why it fell out. He was already kind of halfway in, halfway so out. So what are we looking for? Fast the glove. Forward. The glove, when it falls out. It's what jammed and it. right after he opens it, the glove will fall out. And then we click on it. Like right there. Yeah, yeah. Take it. Please watch closely. This is the continuation of the part I showed you earlier. Back and to the left. Back, Back and, and, to, and to, to the, the left. left. Back <laughs> and, and to, to the, the left. left. <laughs> that is one magic glove, Your Honor. Oh, also the blue badge. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <gasps> My God. Something white fell out of the locker. <gasps> <gasps> Sir. That's my experience when things fall out. When doors are open, they <laughs> fall. I often fall and roll great distances. We can't be sure that the item was completely inside the locker to begin with. What do you mean? The sensor triggers the lock when the door is shut. What if something was inserted, say, between the sensor and the door? <gasps> inserted. What does that mean? Back and to the left. The paint can's watching this. Yeah, guys. it does. White this thing. white thing wasn't inside the locker. It was stuck between the door and the sensor. <gasps> I understand, Al, sir. It's just like my tie. Two of the three times it gets stuck in the door when I get out of my patrol vehicle. Instead of the door closing, my tie chokes me. The object would have to be extremely thin to fit in the door. What could this hand-shaped object be? Not only that, it would also have to block electrical currents. Yeah, it's like a rubber, rubber or something. Glider. It would need to be an insulator. Yeah, an insulator my, at the crime scene. There just might have been something that well, fits the description. We do have that photo of, sir, by insulator, don't you mean? I don't think I finally got this figured out. Have you ever played Res like, uh, Red I Alert think. 2? Rubber Shoes in Motion? Come on. <laughs> Very well. The friends will pr present relevant evidence. And we have that picture of the glove draped over the crime scene tape. Uh, somewhere. We just have the glove, actually. Oh, we do have the glove. We can just present that. I forgot we took evidence from the evidence. And it's tagged. Uh, Extremely thin rubber glove. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, take that. I got my rubber I found this near the locker. A thin rubber glove. But we can't be sure that was in the victim's locker. The tag set. Yeah, come on. Come on. You're just dragging this out, Judge. <laughs> the video seems to depict the victim opening the locker. But that isn't uh, the case. The lit lamp attests to this. Come on, Judge. Work with me here. On the day of the crime, even I could have opened the locker. Is this not so, Officer Meekins? Or should I say glove? Yeah, I feel it appear so, man. <laughs> order, order, order. So are we to believe, then, that the victim whom this witness stabbed in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman? Do not be misled, Your Honor. <gasps> what 
you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? The defense has merely demonstrated that possibility, and nothing more. The victim in the video was indeed Bruce Goodman. Oh? The prosecution will offer one more testimony to prove this. What? Officer Meekins, please testify about this. Testify. Sir? Me? Sir? I'm not sure what you're referring to, sir. <gasps> oh, you mean, of course, of course. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean, I didn't realize you meant that. Is this some joke? Very, very well. Uh, begin your testimony. Mm, I'm getting tired. Mm. <gasps> Mystery Man 2. There's one other thing that proves the man was Detective Goodman. The ID card, which can in no way fall into the hands of someone else, say a lawyer. <laughs> when an ID card is used, there's a record. And we have a record. <sighs> At the time of the crime. The time of the crime. Oh, nice rhyme. Detective, use the card. ID card record. Please. I have the ID card record oh, right oh, here, Your I, Honor. I have the ID card record. Shut up, Edgeworth. Yes, that ID was used at 514. Just before the crime. Hmm. Without a doubt, this is the victim's ID. However, one thing does strike me as unusual. Several hundred cases should have been due for transfer. Why were there so few people using this room? Someone was murdered in it. <laughs> this particular evidence room is only used for storing certain special cases. That's actually a good detail. Um, special cases? Extremely violent cases involving police staff. Just hearing that makes my hair stand on end. Which is why the fishing Me pole too. is inside. Although it doesn't make much of a difference. There were only a few cases up for transferal there, and most were cleared by noon. All right, I see. Let's move on to the cross-examination. I was more thinking that was like page two, being that it started at like four, you know? <laughs> but whatever. Um, all right, so we press on everything. Okay. Yep. So unlike your earlier testimony, you believe this to be rock solid, do you? I'd even give the V for victory sign, sir. Couldn't he just use his right hand? Let's just hear him out. No one ever knows what he might say until the very last second. <laughs> <laughs> Is that card hanging from your neck one of those ID cards? Yes, sir. This card right next to my cuffs, sir. I keep it here so I won't ever forget it. But what if someone were to steal it from you, keeping it out in the open like that? Huh. Maybe I shouldn't wear it around my neck. Uh, I don't remember what I said two out of three times. My tie gets stuck in when I get my car. Yeah. Well, the remaining time, it's my ID card that gets stuck. <laughs> Instead of the door closing, my ID card chokes me. Maybe I should just leave this one alone. At any rate, each police officer has only one ID card. Both the police department and the prosecutor's office can attest to this. Mm. Please proceed with your testimony. Let it be noted that this is the record the witness referred to. Let me see. Yep, that's it. Mm -hmm. What's the matter? Uh, according to this... Mr. Edgeworth, your name is on here. So it is, Your Honor. Oh. <laughs> Not that guy. He's behind everything. Being a prosecutor, he could hide the evidence. Mommy, it's that man in blue, the murderer. <laughs> what, what? The man in blue? <gasps> You've got the wrong that devil in blue. The inquiry will speak with you today. I have nothing to be ashamed of regarding my actions or their consequences. 
For now, let us continue with the cross-examination. Hmm. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. It must be so difficult for him. Mr. Meekins. Earlier, I believe you testified that when you asked the man to show his ID card, he pulled a knife on you. Yep. He didn't even show me any ID card. Oh. Don't you think that's odd? I mean, if he had his ID card, all he had to do is show it to you. There wouldn't be any reason to draw a knife. <gasps> Maybe he just panicked. Everything stems from contradictions. Let's point them out. Mr. Ray, what do you think? I'm confused. What? The problem with this ID card testimony is far too obvious. It's not like Edward to miss something like this. You're thinking too hard about it. Come on, let's show them what we got. Uh, we just want to show them we have the ID card, right? Um, but on what statement? Uh, pull over one. In the evidence room, one must use their ID card. Like this one or the one where... Not necessarily their ID card. You could use any ID card. But but we have Mr. Goodman's, right? Yeah. But there's one other thing. I guess it doesn't matter. To enter the right evidence there. room, one must use their ID card. That's That's Goodman's, right? Yeah. Let's just present it. See what happens. Oh, hands down. Wait one moment, Officer Minkins. Both of my hands are on the table now. I'm not good at waiting. I have the victim's ID card right here. I found it at the crime scene. Well, that makes sense. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> when I say crime scene, I'm not referring to the evidence room at the police department. I mean the other crime scene. Ah. The underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. I missed that connection. Your Honor, I have one more piece of evidence to present. It is very important clue to uh, regarding the victim's ID card. A lost item report. <gasps> I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> but it shows that Detective Goodman had lost something on the day of the crime. Something important enough to fill out this report. I lost my marbles. Let me guess. You believe this something to be his ID card, right? I can't say for sure, but there's a high probability. On the day of the crime, Detective Goodman was not carrying his card. Order, order. So, uh, what does this all mean? It can only mean one thing. It doesn't even require much thought. Oh, good. The man Officer Minkins encountered in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman, but rather the man who stole his ID card. Shouldn't we not be trying to prove that because our client murdered this guy somewhere else? Does the prosecution have a response? I have only one thing to say to the defense. Question? Bravo, Mr. Wright. Oh, no. Bravo? We oui. Allow me to summarize the defense's argument. At 5.15 on the day of the crime, the man in the evidence room Officer Meekins encountered was not Detective Goodman. There are two grounds to support this. First, the locker in the evidence room was already unlocked. Second, the victim lost his ID card. Am I correct so far, Mr. Wright? Yes. What's he up to? That being the case, we must inevitably r arrive at a single conclusion. If the victim in this video is a fake, then the murder in the evidence room is also a fake. In other words, the security camera does not show the instant of the murder. Uh, that, that is, well, I guess that's right. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Only moments ago, you seemed content to be pointing your finger around. This isn't going to end well. Well, well. It seems you finally realized. 
Exactly what you've gone to such lengths to prove. Explain yourself, Mr. Edgeworth. The defense has already done the explaining for me. The victim in this video is a fake, which means a murder did not take place. At the police department at 515 on the day of the crime. So... So the real crime could only take place at one location. The underground I guess we lot. don't have an autopsy report or body. Not for the, the police department, police, no. police department. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> the murderer being Miss Lena Skies. Finally, justice. The oh, evidence oh, crap. is compelling. <laughs> oh, that's a right. trustworthy witness. Observe the moment of the defendant used the murder weapon. Oh, yes. Uh, our very ah. damning ah. evidence against our client who we're defending. And the sister of the person who's we sitting next to We got rid of her alibi. <laughs> yeah. Um, I knew that testimony was too shabby. It was all a trap from the beginning. Well, the activity in the evidence room leaves many questions unanswered. Who is this victim Officer Meekins encountered? <laughs> Tonight on Unsolved Mysteries. The trial's purpose is to examine only the murder of Detective Goodman. Just so, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, you have to do something or else, Lana. What do I do? Oh, my God. Well, we object. <laughs> we'll wait and see what happens. I don't know. <laughs> One moment, Your Honor. What now, Mr. Wright? Don't tell me you're objecting to what you've just proven. Mm-mm. Of course not. But I almost walked right into the prosecution's trap. What are you talking about? This cross-examination has proven one thing and one thing only. The security video did not show the actual murder. That's it. And to the left. The guy in the white coat was a ghost <laughs> or Spider-Man. There's a uh, wormhole in the locker that he went to. Yes, I However, object. it cannot be said that it is unrelated to the murder in the parking lot. Ah. Specifically, large amounts of blood traces were found in the evidence room. The defense demands further examination into the truth of the matter. Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor? If this court were to examine this further, other witness witnesses would be necessary. Is the prosecution prepared? I'm sorry, Your Honor. The prosecution considered the incident the police department to be unrelated. We have not prepared any other witnesses for this incident. This just might be my chance. Time to call a certain Texas Ranger to the stand. Gumshoe. Mr. Wright, do you mean... Your Honor, the defense would like to request a specific witness. Oh, my God. Whom do you have in mind? Someone we have reason to believe knows the truth. The truth behind the activities that took place in the evidence room. The prosecution requests to hear this person's name before deciding whether or not to comply. <coughs> this person whom you would have testify, what is his or her name? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. He's a cowboy. Uh, Although we would like to see more of the... Officer Jake Marshall. Huh. Why him? I can't let Edgeworth know everything just yet. He's in charge of the evidence room. I feel we should hear what he has to say. The prosecution agrees to the defense's request. Since he was responsible for the guarding the room, we should hear his testimony. Fortunately, he works in the police department. We shouldn't need longer than 20 minutes to prepare. Mm-hmm. Very well. Court will take 30-minute recess. Kick the ball on the uh, northeast corner. Will the prosecution please prepare the witness during this time? We will, Your Honor. Court is now in recess. 
Everyone have fun. How, How many mufflers does uh, Lana have since one of them is in evidence? Um, <laughs> well, you've got to have daily mufflers. I mean, you don't want to wear one muffler two days in a row. That one's you, Don. I know. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> There's no stopping you, is there, Mr. Red? Huh? What do you mean? You called for Jake Marshall. It seems you figured out everything. Um, uh, I haven't figured out anything. Lana, yes. you're the one who knows everything. Yes, Emma. <laughs> you always know everything. Why didn't you just tell us? Mr. Good. Red is trying his hardest to protect you. I, I don't recall ever asking for protection. <laughs> How can you be so cold? Don't you trust us? Don't you trust me? She's not really Lana. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually <laughs> Gumshoe. <laughs> Did you like my disguise, pal? <laughs> Look, I'll do it again. I'll switch. I'll switch modes. <laughs> I'm master of disguise. I'm gonna be the master of disguise. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Detective Gumshoe. What? What is it? What just happened? <laughs> I'm materializing from the ether, pal. You got a lot of nerve. Making a detective run around while on duty. And to top it off, you call me here. I've seen happier people at funeral. We didn't call you. Sorry, Sorry detective. <laughs> you better be, pal. Hey. 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 I didn't see you there. Chief, Prote- Chief Prosecutor Sky. That's okay. So, have you brought what I asked? Oh, 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 <laughs> Merry Christmas. You mean this, right? <laughs> my apologies, Detective. Due to my present circumstances, I was forced to use Mr. Wright's name when making my request. My name? Oh, um, never in a million years would I have thought it was you who asked me. <laughs> Could I bother you to bring me the SCL9 incident files? Yeah, well, you know, my new talk about crazy. The, the SCL9, SCL9 incident. yeah. <laughs> but Lana, that's a I lot thought, of reading. I thought Mr. Wright might need them, so I had them brought here. Here, you might do well to read all of this in five minutes. Well, we've got like 15 now. Yeah. I can't believe you did this, Taylor. Miss Sky <laughs> was a witness. Take it from me, pal. You don't want anything to do with serial murderers. <laughs> <laughs> Ellipsis. Oh, what? Now that you brought your... Are you just going to ignore me? Uh, Emma? But why? Why is your name in here? <gasps> what, what have you what done? Is that? That's the classification number the police filed it under. Two years ago, the rest of the world knew it as the Joe Dark killings. The yes. Joe Dark. No. No, Lana. That's all over with. No. Emma, wait. Uh, you know what? I just remembered. I gotta be somewhere. Somewhere that's not awkward. Bye, pal. <laughs> All right. So now we have homework. Yep. But we found out about it right before the class. Not to mention Lena and Emma. Everyone involved in this case is connected to those killings two years ago. This can't just be a coincidence. Knowing you, you just might be able to figure it out. Time to get back to the trial, Mr. Wright. Best of luck. I better take a good look at this file. 